हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू गैंग्स ऑफ टॉपर्स एज वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द टॉपिक दैट इज नेचुरल रीजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इन दिस क्लास वी आर वी विल फोकस ऑन द टॉपिक दैट इज नेचुरल टेम्परेड ग्रासलैंड ओके और टॉपिक इज टेम्परेड ग्रासलैंड एंड दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक ओके नाउ हेयर द टर्म इंडिकेट्स वॉट इज टेम्परेट नाउ विट विल दिस टेम्परेट लैंड इज बेसिकली गोइंग टू लाई इन दैट विच जोन दैट इज टेम्परेट जोन सपोज दिस इज आवर ग्लोब एंड दिस इज आवर एक्टिवेटर This is our topic of Cancer. This is our Arctic Circle. This is our topic of Capricorn. This is our Antarctic Circle. Now we are actually focusing on this region. We are actually focusing on this region. That this region is our temperate zone. This is our region is our temperate zone. So th the grassland that lies in this region that will come under the temperate zone. Okay, uh, that will called as a temperate grassland. So this is our equator, and this is our zero degree, and this is our that is twenty three and half north. And sixty-six and half, that is north, and this is about ninety degree, that is north. And again, if we talk about this, this is about twenty-three and half south, and this will be about that is sixty-six and half so south, and this will be about ninety degree south. So we are actually focusing on this region. This is our region. This is our region. Okay, and this region is called as the temperate zone. Okay, and if we talk about the region between the tropic of Cancer and the tropic of Capricorn, that will be called as tropical zone but if you talk about the temperate zone that is the reason between the tropic of cancer and the arctic circle that is the reason between the tropic of cancer and the arctic circle that will called as what temperate zone that is in the northern hemisphere if we talk about the southern hemisphere that is the tropic of capricorn to the antarctic circle the reason between the tropic of capricorn and the antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere is we called as what it will, it will be called as simple it is called as a temperate zone and if we talk about this region this region will called as a polar zone or fluid zone so actually we are focusing on this grassland we are, we are actually focusing on this grassland that is these grassland are basically going to lie between these region with these grassland are going going to lie in between these region so we'll see in the diagram also that most of the grasslands temperate grasslands are lying in this region okay suppose If we talk about this side, this is our what? This is our where? That is North America. If we talk about the North America, here you will find an important grassland. That is a prairie's grass grassland. Here, you, here you are going to find a prairie's grassland. And now, if you talk about this European part, you will get that is a steppe's grassland. You will get steppe's. And if you talk about that is China, you will get a Manchurian. You get a Manchurian grassland. You will get a Manchurian. and these all grasslands they are basically lying in this zone only in this zone only and if we talk about if we talk if we come to the southern hemisphere you will get that is in the in south america you will get a grassland that is called as pampas you will get pampas and if you talk about this region that is called as a veld that is called as veld that is in the where that is in the africa that is in the you can say that is in the south africa and if we talk about this grassland that is in australia you will get that is down so you will get mostly that is these grasslands are basically lying in there in the northern hemisphere if you talk about that is this from the tropic of cancer to the arctic circle and from tropic of capricorn to the antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere we will get all the grasslands in the temperate zone only so we will go one by one that is these that is these continent or these countries are basically are under the influence these basically these countries are under the influence of the circulation of the westerly winds that is mostly throughout the year means okay you will say that suppose if you if you study the belt if you study the different temperate uh, different pressure belt and the wind you will see that the direction of the wind that is from the westerly the direction of the wind is from westerly okay so these country are basically lying in these countries are under the circulation of westerly wind of the most of the suppose let's once again how it is westerly let's see suppose this is our globe okay and this is our equator and so equator equator region will have a low pressure equator region have a low pressure again we have what is we have subtropical high pressure after that we have subpolar low pressure and after that we have polar high pressure okay similarly if you talk about in this region we have that is a subtropical high pressure and again after that we have subpolar low pressure and after that we have that is a what is polar high pressure okay now we are talking about that this is most of the reason that is basically will be from where to where look this is our equator okay and this is our uh, this is what this is our tropic of cancer this is our tropic of cancer this is our arctic circle this is our that is what poles that is north pole 
and again if you talk about in this region we'll go we will get to know that this is our equator this is our topic of capricorn this is antarctic circle and this is our what this is our south pole okay now now we are talking about this region. we are talking about this region that is from the region between arctic circle and the topic of cancer this region will come under the temperate zone okay and the reason that is between the tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic circle will come under the temperate zone. So we are focusing on this region. Now we will see that what is the direction of the wind. Okay. Now since it is a now again we we will mark that is this is our low pressure that is equator low pressure that is subtropical high pressure. This is a high pressure again. This is subpolar low pressure and this is a high pressure. We have to mark. Now we are we are focusing on this region. Now suppose this is high pressure and this is low pressure. What is going to happen? The direction of the wind, the direction of the wind from high pressure to low pressure. We will get that the wind want to travel from high to low, but due to correlation effect, when wind is going to deflect this side. Okay. Now if we talk about this, that is the the uh, if we talk about that is in the in this is in the northern hemisphere. Okay. Due to uh, due to influence in the northern hemisphere, that is the wind deflects to the right. If we talk about that is the wind, the the wind want to travel from high pressure to low pressure. What is the direction? What is the deflection of the wind? Wind will travel from this side to this side. What means? If you want to go from this side to this side, again you are going this side, then the wind will deflect this side. Means it will be deflected to the left, like this. Okay. And these winds are called westerly. These winds are called westerly winds. These winds are called westerly. So here it is written that so in this in this in this point you will see that these areas are basically under the influence or under the circulation of the westerly wind build because most of the land are lying lying in this region. Only. Most of the land you will get that most of the land or most of the area you will get in this region only. Okay, most of the all the that is this is. This is what this is what what this is our Paris that is in the North America and our this is the steppes that is in the Europe and this is the Manchurian that is Manchurian grassland that is in the China and after that if you talk about this region that is Pampas that is in the South America this is Africa that is Weld and if you talk about Australia these regions are basically under the influence of circulation of western living I thought I hope these two gram in these two diagram you get all, all the thing now. Now, we'll, if you study about the location, location, I think we have already stated that is the reason will be between a, a tropical cancer and the Arctic circle in the northern hemisphere and the tropical Capri Capricorn and the Antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere. So, approx the, uh, the location will be this only. Now, what is written here? That is, if you talk about that, the temperate grassland occupy the interior of the, now, this temperate grassland, Grasslands are going to occupy the interior of the continent, and you will see that these temperate grasslands are occupied the interior of the continent in the mid latitude. Yeah, already we have studied that this is our equator, and after that, after that we have low latitude, then the mid latitude, then last we have what the south pole or north pole. So these talking about that the temperate grassland occupy the interior of the continent in the middle latitude zone that is between what between 40 degree to 55 degree north and south that is what so north and south latitude means the extension will be from 40 to 40 55 degree north and south latitude in the in both hemisphere. This grassland occupy vast area vast area in the northern hemisphere where where their east west extension is the broader. Now if you see in the map and that you see in the map there's these regions occupy vast area in the northern hemisphere because due to extension due to in the due to the broader of the land due to broader the land and you can say that uh, due to these grassland occupy vast area in the northern hemisphere where their east and west extension is broader you can say in the map that uh, the area that is uh, the extension is if if you say from east to west the extension is large the extension is large the extension but if you talk about in this uh, uh, southern uh, hemisphere the due to less due to less extension due to less extension the uh, uh, the grasslands are small but if you talk about in the northern hemisphere the area is vaster so the the extension of the grasslands is very large or you can say broader why because due to limitation of land you can say now if you talk about the areas areas already studied that is europe europe that is also called the steppes grassland about the asia that is we will study that is manchurian or manchurian grassland and after that we talk about the north america you will get the paris in the north america you are going, going to get the paris and the south uh, in the south africa what is you going to get 
in south africa you will get the wild and if you talk about that is australia you are going to get a dawn now one by one we will go through the uh, topic a narrow belt that is lying in that is lying to the north or uh, north of the black sea and the caspian sea and a small area in the hungarian plains are known as bustas now it is very important that uh, this is that is a, a grassland a grassland that is called as what a grassland that is called as a hmm, that is called that is hungary grassland hungary grassland is called as by what name so you can say that then you can say that uh, that is a narrow land a narrow land that is lying between the north that is lying between the caspian sea and the black sea then these are small areas that is in the hungarian plains then you can say the hungarian plains are also known as pustas okay we are talking about this region that is you see this is the caspian this is the caspian sea, this is the black sea and this is the caspian sea, okay and the region between this is known as hungarian okay now after that manchurian after the manchurian plains that is north west china and the western siberia after that we will we will study that is north america that is a part of us and the canada situated between the great lakes and the rocky and the rocky that is known as a prairies and the rocky is means rocky is mountain and south america that is it is a part of argentina uruguay and the pampas already studied pampas and the grasslands are situated on the plateau which is which is on the leeward side of the deccan bergs mountain means we will study deccan the leeward side of the deccan bergs mountain and that is known as wild and after that australia the grasslands are known as don that is in the um, that is moorle darling basin you will see that in australia that is these these there is a river uh, there is a very important river that is a moorle darling river and the basins and the basins are very hmm, basins are um, basins are there you can say mean drainage system and you will see that the grasslands are known by the don and after that we will see the, about the climatic condition climatic condition okay very important first one is that we will study the climatic condition from this from from here climatic condition now first point is that is the uh, cl in the conti a cl continental climate a cl continent it it has a continental climate with short warm now what is going to happen that is uh, we are talking about the temperate grassland so it has a continental climate it has a, a continental climate with a short and warm summer with a short and warm summer and a long and cold winter means you have to remember that it has a continental type of climate with a, with short and warm summer with a short and warm summer and cold long cold and long and cold winter now second one is second point is that you have to remember that the rainfall is moderate and variable rainfall is going to be moderate and variable and the extreme of temperature are greater in the northern hemisphere than that of southern hemisphere. so it is very important that the extreme means the difference between that the temperature in the northern hemisphere and the temperature in the southern hemisphere if you talk, if you if you are going to find the difference then you will get you will get a great extreme uh, extreme of temperature you, you will get a great difference between the temperature of northern hemisphere and that of southern hemisphere the hottest month it has the temperature that is 15 degrees celsius to 25 degrees celsius okay and if you could talk about the coldest month the coldest month has a temperature of less than 0 degrees celsius and the annual range of temperature that is between 20 degrees celsius to 25 degrees celsius okay and then if you talk about the annual rainfall that is an annual rainfall varies from 25 centimeter to 60 centimeter depending upon the location of place depending upon the location of place okay and uh, most of the reason that is most of the reason get the rainfall by the conventional origin by the conventional origin and mostly light showers in the and mostly light showers in the su summer season uh, mostly light showers you can say that is most of the rainfall in this season get due to conventional origin and mostly light showers and mostly means mo you will get the light showers in the summer season now we have we have already studied about the temperature you you can see that the temperature is between 15 degrees celsius to 25 degrees celsius and if you told that is the temperature is below that is if you told the temperature is below 0 degrees celsius and after that if you talk about the annual range of temperature that is varies between 18 degrees celsius to 26 degrees celsius okay and this is very important that is temperate grasslands are known by different names in the in the different continents so you have to remember that this is very important that is temperate grasslands are known by different names in the different continent first one is eurasia that is eurasia stepes stepes and hungary that is pustas africa that is wales north america that is prairies south america that is pampas and australia that is down we have already discussed their location also now we will study about the rainfall now we, we are going to study about the rainfall rainfall is very important okay means due to a scanty rain now i think we have already studied rainfall also in this point in the climatic in the climate condition itself now 
okay we'll we'll go through the topic that is uh, the it varies the rainfall rainfall that is 20 centimeter to 60 centimeter 20 centimeter to 60 centimeter and in north america if we talk about the north america that is local winds like chinook bring a uh, bring about a certain increase in temperature bring, bring about a certain increase in temperature in for a few days and the snow covers the smells away now we have to remember why this chinook brings this is actually this chinook is a local winds and they, that generally comes they generally going to increase the certain they're going to increase the, the temperature in the leeward side of in the leeward side in the leeward side and thus the snow covers the smells away thus the snow covers the smell away okay i think you will see that the you will see that this is are basically hmm, suppose uh, you will see this is america and we are talking about this you are talking about this is this is a mountain okay this is a rocky mountain you see now what is going to happen suppose wind is going to this side wind is going to the marshall and wind is going to this side okay now if this wind is due to relief due to relief rainfall i think you have all due to relief rainfall you can say due to orography rainfall what is going to happen this is mountain and the wind is coming this side now due to sudden ascent due to sudden ascent the wind is going to condense the wind is going to condense and get precipitated rain will come here but all the wind is not going to condense here so some winds is going will cover this side now this winds does not have much moisture so this wind has warm as compared to this wind so now this this parcel of air you can say this parcel of air come this side and due to due to the atmospheric pressure due to atmospheric pressure uh, the the temperature of the air parcel is going to increase okay so this this air does not have moisture so this air does not have moisture and uh, this air parcel uh, ha increase its tendency or uh, you can say that uh, this air parcel it does not, this air parcel can occupy more water vapor in it okay so you can say that this air parcel become warm and is going to eat and is going to eat what and is going to eat the ice so you can say that this chinook bring a sudden increase in temperature for a few days and thus covers and thus snow covers the smell you can say that chinook is a ice eater now after that about, about the natural vegetation that is on the account of low rainfall because since it is a low rainfall that is 20 20 centimeter to 20 centimeter to 60 centimeter long period of drought and the cold winter long period means it has a long period of drought and long cold winter and it has a treeless area it has a treeless area you can say so both curds and the tall grass as well as short and uh, soft grass is the characteristic vegetation of the continental steppes climate now if you talk about this climate that is in due to rain, low rainfall it has tall grass and the coarse grass as well as soft and short grass and this is the characteristic of this continental type of climate okay and after that the if you talk about the various species of the grasses are found now you do various species of the grasses are found they are able to stand they are able to withstand low rainfall and seasonal variation now you will see that in this natural vegetation you will see that various species of the grasslands are found now in this in this grassland you will see that there are various grasses there are various species of grasses that are found and that are able to withstand that are able to withstand low rainfall that are able level able, able to withstand low temperature or rainfall in the seasonal variation now if it the herbivorous animal the herbivorous animals who feed on the grasslands are found in large number so here we will get so many herbivorous animals that is they are going to feed the grass in large number and common herbivorous include that is bison in the north america and other animals also include this asses and horses kangaroo is generally found in the australian grassland and the carnivorous animals are the rodent and the reptiles and after that human adaptation very important the temperate grassland is known as the granaries of the world it's very important please remember that in this exam in, in this exam it is going to ask the temperate grasslands are known as what the temperate grassland are known as the granaries of the world they are ideal for the extensive wheat cultivation they, what is what is the they are the ideal for the wheat cultivation and produce the greatest quantity of the wheat per capita amongst the world wheat growing nation so you can say this area you can say this area are basically known as a granaries of the world because why because this area produce extensive wheat cultivation because it is ideal for the extensive wheat cultivation and produce the greatest quantity of the wheat okay and they are actually exporting the world also cotton and maize are also available here Thank you.